Welcome to week 9 of Destination Cork Summer Series and this week as promised we have a very special full beach blend episode showcasing Blarney Castle Estate and Gardens. We're going to take you ever so slightly behind the scenes to chat to Paul and the team here and then I'm going to show you a few of my own favourite spots on the grounds. And of course my all time favourite, favourite spot on the grounds is the beautiful Gate Lodge where I have been truly fortunate to live for the past few years and anybody who's met me on that on international sales trip will have heard me speaking about it and you know I'm so lucky to have lived here and when you're asked when you're away traveling and promoting Ireland and Destination Cork when you mention that you live on the grounds of Blarney Castle everybody in the world has heard about the stone so it was really special to be able to talk about it um, and to include it on all of our trips abroad and around the country and the last, uh, we're on week nine now, the last eight Destination Cork series have been recorded from the comfort of my kitchen. But as we said, today is a really, really special one. We're going to take you around the grounds itself. And I really just wanted to showcase and mention one last time our lovely Gate Lodge. We're coming to the end of our time living here, but it will always have a very, very special place in my heart. And I feel truly fortunate to have been based here for so many years. And of course, in addition to having it um, as a sales tool and mentioning it on many many trips it's also for me personally obviously a fantastic experience to be able to come home from a day at the hotel or a trip abroad and come back to this beautiful sanctuary this lovely estate wake up every morning with the view of the castle in my eye line And of course the first thing I see when I drive in coming home from work as well so I feel truly spoiled to have had the opportunity and I'm really excited to share the grounds and the castle with you today. We're delighted to be joined or should I say welcomed by the wonderful Paul O'Sullivan the marketing manager here at Blarney Castle and Gardens today. So this area here is the main entrance and exit way into the castle when you're coming to experience the attraction and before we go on and see of the castle itself and before we kiss the stone we're just going to have a quick chat to Paul about all of the significant investments that have been made around the grounds in the last few years particularly in this area to enhance the visitor experience here. Yeah so I think the big change really has been the cafe facilities and the toilet facilities and um, if you were here a number of years ago you would have seen a little wooden shed that would be your teas and coffees so that definitely would have made your cosmetically it looks a lot better now yeah, and then really the other big issue then really was toilets um, there was probably a longer queue for the toilets than for the castle so um, that was obviously an issue that was coming quite a bit um, so then the idea was we do the coffee shop first and then the rest of the extension then was for the toilet facilities and it's been it's been a huge help um, I mean that issue was, was getting to really break the point so we needed to resolve that and in the last original one was fine maybe a little bit dark and dreary and not very welcoming but you know we got new picnic tables in nice covered seating area and you know both the visitors and even our local membership you know I've really enjoyed this particularly in the last number of months and it's been it's been used to great effect and while we know that everyone who comes to Ireland comes for the blue skies not <laughs> it is great that that seating area now is a covered area yep. on the odd day that there might be a small shower so it's lovely that they can now sit under that canopy and awning as well and it's really great you know you you take the customer feedback on board and then you do something about it and make it a better experience for everybody which is fantastic to see and it's really nice also that you have the little uh, the flowers there on sale given that it is also known for the gardens and for the flowers here and i love that i love the flowers along the side it really makes it a lovely attraction on the way in first thing you see yeah, the flowers has been a great new addition. Um, we have a walled kitchen garden here, so um, a lot of that, I suppose, produce is from there. So, I mean, we've lettuce there that's actually from the walled kitchen garden. So you can get Blarney Castle, Blarney Castle lettuce. Yeah, <laughs> you and so you choose. also grow apples to make your own... Um, we do our own apple juice. Apple juice, yeah. Um, and we just got jars of honey in because we actually have a bee observatory on site and we produce some of our own honey. So I think that's going on sale. I think in the next couple of days. So 
yeah, we do a lot of the produce ends up either in the cafes or in the in the shops here, so which is really good. Really nice. So farm to fork right here at the castle, which is lovely. And you mentioned earlier as well the local residents and the membership. So that's something I wanted to come back to because particularly over the last few months, I think it has been a fantastic facility for people here locally in Blarney and in Cork to be able to buy an annual membership and to be able to come here anytime they like. Basically. Perfect, Yay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fire away, Paul. So this castle was built in 1446, as you correctly said, and it was built by the McCarthy family. Um, so in the whole history of Blarney, we've really had three families that have owned the property. So the McCarthys were the first, that was followed on by the Jefferies, and then we have the current owner then, Charles Coach, and his family. And they actually inherited the property through marriage, and that was in 1864 because at the time the Jeffreys only had one daughter and that was Louisa but at the time it had to be left to the oldest son now as there was no son it was then basically whoever Louisa married would inherit the property so that's how Charles' family came to own the state in terms of the castle behind us it's not the first castle we've had here it's actually the third um, the first was built in the early 1100s it was a, a wooden structure but far too easy to burn down, far too difficult to defend. So they replaced that with a small stone structure in the early 1200s. And then the decision was made that, uh, as I say, upgrade and add an extension. <laughs> so they actually demolished that stone castle and built this one in the exact same place. And this castle took 40 years to build. Wow. Okay. Well, worth the 40 years, clearly, because it's been standing since 1446. It's the five-star version of the original 1200 castle and it really is beautiful. We're so lucky to have it on our doorstep here in Cork because so many people want to come and see it with good reason. And can you tell us, Paul, how many visitors do you welcome approximately every year here to the grounds? So every year, um, generally last year, it was about 460,000 visitors. Um, that's been climbing probably for the last four or five years. Mm. Um, we were down in around the, the mid 300,000s and it's been gradually building every year. Uh, so this year will be a little different, but look, um, we'll, we'll see how next year goes and hopefully we can start building up towards that number again over the coming years. Yeah, but it really is a beautiful, a beautiful attraction for people to visit. It's a must do, I think, in any visit to Cork and certainly en route maybe to Killarney. And next up on our tour of Blarney Castle and Estate is the beautiful Mansion House. Built in 1874, same year as the lovely Gate Lodge. Um, it really is a fantastic, fantastic structure and kind of a hidden gem really. Not everybody comes to kiss the stone realises that it's here on the grounds and I think you know, it's a missed opportunity not to have a look at it at the very least because um, it really is beautiful, reminiscent of kind of Downton Abbey-esque style property um, and really lovely. And in the summer, Paul, you usually open this for tours in June, July and August, is that right? Yeah, so we, we do guided tours June, July and August, um, Monday to Saturday from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. Okay. Um, and the tours go, well, it depends. They are to go every half an hour, every 20 minutes. Okay. Um, we've kind of changed over the years, so I'm not sure what they'll, uh, what the way they'll go next year, but we certainly do the tours 
and I have to say they are a fantastic tour. I mean, it's very in depth. You've got a great history of the family. Um, obviously, the artwork inside is, is quite amazing as well. So you get a very in depth uh, look at that. And obviously, then the architectural style of the building. It's Scottish baronial in style, and our guides go into that in quite a bit of detail as well. So um, you get some very funny stories as well because there's been a lot of great stories over the years. And our owner Charles is great for, um, I suppose, relaying those stories to us uh, for the tours. So. Yeah, it's a bit of a bit of comedy in it as well, which is good. Hopefully, the visitors must love meeting him and hearing all about the ancestral stories. Yeah, because I suppose he doesn't live in the house when we do the tours, so he okay. moves down to the farm, which is about five or six hundred meters to the south mm -hmm. of the house. Um, but he does have an office here, so he does kind of be in and out um, quite a bit. So uh, some of the tours do bump into him, and uh, that's always a, that's always a highlight for them. Lovely. It's always nice to meet the owner. <laughs> we say the same at the hotel when Mr. Scally is around, and he takes the time to say hello to our visitors and our guests. So. It is a nice treat for people to actually meet, meet the owners and inhabitants of the house. So definitely a must if you're coming this way to at least get a lovely picture in front of the house and to do a tour when it's open in June, July and August. And now for the second half of the obviously tree surgeon here, member of the gardening squad. So they're very nice and they're a nice little extra to have for your visit here to have that little keepsake moment too with the of the castle. Right, here we go guys, 172 steps, here we come. along here a number of signs which go through kind of four of the, the legends I suppose that are I suppose around about the stone we made the decision I suppose that instead of just going with one we'd allow people maybe to make up their own mind but um, I suppose I've always gone with the, the story that Charles the owner has, uh, has told me and, and that was that the stone was actually an altar stone that was brought over from the Holy Land during the Crusades and was given as a gift to the Lord of the castle. So when he was deciding where to put it, he decided to build it into the outer battlements at the very top, and he put it there for safekeeping. Now, the way you kiss it nowadays is you lie down on your back and you lean back and kiss it. It's very straightforward. 
but originally you were held by your ankles out over the outside of the wall and you kissed it on the outside because that was the only access to it. Now, why you kiss it? Well, the Lord at the time, he actually had a slight speech impediment and he was walking around Blarney Lake one night and he heard these awful screams coming from the lake and he looked in and he saw a woman drowning. So he jumped in and saved her and when he pulled her to shore, he got an awful shock because it was the witch that lived in the rock close. So as a thank you, the witch said, if you kiss the famous stone, it'll get rid of your speech impediment. So that's where the gift of eloquence or the gift of gab, as our American visitors say, comes from. Or as we kind of say nowadays, if you kiss it, you can talk yourself out of any situation. <laughs> Very handy for a hotelier. So, I actually really don't need to kiss it in terms of getting any more gift of gab because I talk an awful lot already, as I think everybody who knows will testify. But I'm going to do it anyway because, you know, we're here now. I want to experience it so that I'll be able to recommend it again to all of our friends and visitors coming here to Cork. Nerves. Paul's going to show me how it's done. And then I miss it. There you go, Paul. Perfect. I'll just let... Uh, here and finish the new cleaning process that we have in place um, to make it safe obviously with the current situation so um, we're using a new spray that we got specifically developed um, for it so uh, the cleaning process takes a little longer so um, but that's fine I can see the drop from here and it's actually cold and very for the wall at work and another one. Oh, looking super scared. <laughs> now for just a little bit more excitement to add to our day out, we're here in the Poison Garden and I know that everybody I bring here, particularly the smallies, are very excited when I mention that we're going to the Poison Garden. It's like, oh, we're going to be poisoned if we walk through it, which is thankfully not the case. Paul, you might, you might explain what the Poison Garden here is all about. So I suppose this is probably the most popular part of our gardens and it's really, I suppose, an educational tool to bring people, uh, you know, awareness about the different types of plants that we have in here. So basically, we have 70 different types of poisonous plants. Anything in a cage, you can't touch, eat or smell. So we have things like uh, American poison ivy, which is down at the bottom. So obviously that's quite poisonous to touch. And um, we have, you know, Mandrake, Deadly Nightshade, kind of popular with the Harry Potter books, so people like that. And the one here then in the, the larger cage is our marijuana plant, which always gets everyone's attention. Yes, okay, that has to be carefully protected. Yeah, carefully protected. Um, very funny story with that. That got removed not long after we put it in place by the, the local police. Um, okay. And the headline in the newspapers the very next day was very simply Blarney Stoned, which is just, <laughs> you know, fantastic. After the excitement of Blarney Stoned and the Poison Garden, we're going to make our way through this beautiful tunnel here made with golden rain trees and to one of the newest features here in the gardens at Blarney Castle, the carnivorous courtyard. Let's have a look. 
So a really nice addition, I think anyway, of course I'm biased, but um, lovely kind of place to spend some time and come up here to see the kind of a courtyard and Venus flytrap, etc, etc. Now I am not good with plants, so we won't go identifying them. That's not our speciality here. No. <laughs> um, but I really think they've made a lovely job of it. Um, a really nice added attraction onto the poison garden. And of course, plenty more work for John. There's a brilliant stonemason who works here on the grounds. I'd say he has a long to-do list. Once his list gets completed, there's another, another longer list yeah. waiting for him. John's a, an extremely busy man, um, as you can imagine, with the castle and all the walls around the, the estate. So, um, But he does f fantastic work. I mean, the stonework is beautiful. Yeah, and he's done lovely, lovely work up here as well. It's really nicely finished. Yeah, this garden's really, really, you know, come to life. Um, the area here was a bit, bit of a waste ground, wasn't really used. Um, and I suppose it was, it was nice to kind of add on to the poison garden something that was kind of related to that okay. so in that area you can't touch eat or smell and with this area then you have to beware of these because some of the plants bite <laughs> so we love a bit of danger here at Blarney you dangle <laughs> off a castle can't touch eat anything yeah. in there and same here so um, but it's a wonderful addition and yet again it's all about educating people yeah. and that's something that we love here in Blarney I know Adam and his team are it's something they're very positive about so no it's a great great addition yeah and it's a bit of fun for all ages young and old yep. so it keeps them interested as they go around the grounds okay so we're coming to the end of our tour of castle with Paul and we'll continue on around the grounds showing you a few of my own favorite spots we'll go on a little walking tour ourselves but for now I would like to say a huge thank you to Paul for your time today, for giving us the chance to kiss the stone, for all of your information on the grounds and the gardens, and I and to say thank you to you and obviously to Charles, Caroline, Adam, Olive, Anthony, the whole team <laughs> here who work so hard to make it such a fantastic attraction. We are so so lucky to have it in Cork. It really, you know, it is iconic worldwide. We don't take that for granted. We're so lucky to be able to say Blarney Castle is. 20 minutes out the road from Hayfield Manor and we recommend it to so many visitors who are staying with us here in Cork or indeed who are leaving us in Hayfield and heading down to Great Southern and Killarney Royal so we are so fortunate to have it and we wish you continued success it's clear how much has gone into it every year and we continue to I'm sure um, it's, it's a lot of work to keep a place like this going as I'm sure you know oh. um, but we really really appreciate it I think here in Cork we're so lucky to have it thank you for your time today no, thank you very much for all your support. I mean, we need all the support we can get, so it's much appreciated. My pleasure. And clearly kissing the stone is already working, because I am <laughs> talk, 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 talking. So if I'm heading for a morning stroll or an evening stroll, this is my favourite place to come. Up the Lime Avenue from the Gate Lodge and in here to this little section. So we've got the Seven Sisters stones over here. And behind me we've got the Three Wise Men trees and really like there's a few trails off here there's a beautiful kind of quieter forest trail that's a little bit tucked away and not many people go on so it's a nice quiet walk and then you can go into the back here and if you've got any little people with you junior guests they're going to love it in this way because there's all these cool tunnels there is a little waterfall there is stairway that you're supposed to climb up backwards and make a wish and then you come into the rock close and it's loads of lovely old trees and climbing and it's a real adventure playground for them so we often head that way if there's a few smallies on tour play for the forest trail which is really my my favorite one here because as i've mentioned it's so quiet so usually you have your little earphones in and you're listening to some genius like Brené Brown or some podcast along the way and of course listen to the birds as you go along as well and it's a really really nice woodland walk right through the back here and over a little stream so it's a lovely kind of tucked away route to take. with again all of the smallies who like to adventure around here and who like to climb up the rocks and on the trees and have a little bit of fun 
And of course, they love this little nook in here, the witch's kitchen. And I'm a big fan of an open fireplace myself, which we always have light in Hayfield and in Southern and the Royal. And um, so, yeah, they love this little spot here. So here is definitely another little favorite spot of mine, particularly early in the morning or late in the evening when it's really quiet. It's a lovely place to come to. You walk down through the grounds and down here as far as Blarney Lake. It's just a really nice setting. Lots of swans and dogs. If you're really lucky, you might see a heron down here. There's often a heron parked over here on, on the on the water lilies. garden this is another little tucked away treasure here on the grounds of the estate and definitely worth a little visit while you're here it's a really picturesque kind of setting lovely waterfalls here and ferns obviously lots of different ferns and Manfred who's a very talented gent who works here and builds a lot of the new boardwalk sidewalk is just working on a boardwalk here over the top area as well soon to be completed which is lovely to see and it's just a really kind of nice area to come to, very tranquil. Do you feel like you're kind of not in Ireland anymore when you're somewhere like this? Although, why would you want to be anywhere but? Um, but it's really lovely. It's a lovely, lovely place to come. And I like to come here as well on my walks around the estate. 